Patrons on my Discord will know that I just got done winning a copyright dispute on YouTube. This is, of course, for my recent CES coverage video, and it seemed to come from CBS Digital. This really confused me because I had no clue where this was coming from. So I Googled around, and, well, Google brought me to this article showing that there was a dispute going on regarding the fact that AMD showed a render of the back of the Xbox Series X. Now, that render they showed was BS, and it came from TurboSquid. So I assume maybe TurboSquid's part of CBS Digital. Maybe they were just mass attacking anyone who used AMD's footage, even though, by the way, guys, I didn't even use that part of AMD's footage in the video. But no, it wasn't that. So I guess it was just a fluke that keyed me in on the fact that AMD and Microsoft are still trying to hide the back of the Xbox. And I've talked about this before in my recent console Armageddon video, that it is not a mistake. There is a reason MS is not revealing the back, and that's because it will reveal many details. But a new supposed Xbox Insider has leaked at least what is called a prototype, maybe not the final back, but a this is the current plan for the back of the Xbox, and there's a pretty giant reveal here. That reveal is that it uses a power cord limited to 250 watts. And that's the type of thing that even if it's not the final back, probably isn't changing. And so now we know. We know how much energy this sucker is probably going to use. And we also know, based on a leak from a couple days ago, the size of the die, 400 millimeters squared. And so this tells us a lot about the performance of the next Xbox and a lot about the efficiency of RDNA 2.0. So yeah, this APU, based on that picture that was put out on Twitter, not really a leak, actually, an intentional teaser by Xbox, it's about 400 millimeters square. But we also have to remember, that's not just for the GPU, no. It also will include some custom features, I'm sure, and the 8-core CPU. And this isn't just the GPU's die, as far as I can tell uh, by digging around online. This is a monolithic APU. That is not just the GPU's die. So, 400 millimeters squared, right? And then you subtract, let's say, again, 70 millimeters squared, roughly, for the 8-core CPU, although it could be less if they remove cache, and I actually kind of expect them to remove cache. Either way, the actual GPU portion is likely to be around a Radeon 7 for just the GPU in die size. Okay, so let's think about that, right? Um, that's, yeah, 40% bigger than a 5700 XT, and although that will not mean it has 64 compute units, it could certainly mean it has, well, I expect it to have more than the 5700 XT. Uh, my guess is that it will probably have between 44 and 52 compute units. Uh, I think 48 would probably be the sweet spot. I am doubtful of that digital foundry leak that the information they have is the 100% final specs for either the PlayStation or the Xbox. It's probably either a dev kit or just some rough estimate of the die it's based on. That's my guess. But nonetheless, I guess it could be up to 56 compute units or something like that. And if it is, they're going to be really dense. But they can save energy by clocking it lower to compensate. So what is the major takeaway here, right? It's almost like we have two out of three pieces to the puzzle to be able to really closely estimate performance. W you know, without knowing exactly how much space is taken up for custom ray tracing hardware, if it's even on that die or if they're using their own separate die like Sony supposedly is, or other types of special features, we, we really just can't say exactly how many compute units there are. We can't yet. Um, and we don't know the final clock speed, although the rumor is 1700 megahertz. But what we can say is this, no matter how you dice it, RDNA 2.0 is going to be a massive efficiency boost over RDNA 1.0. doesn't matter how much more efficient exactly, it's going to be a lot. We're not talking about 10 or 20% more efficient because... With a 250 watt limit on the power cord, that's 250 watts for the entire system. And power supplies are not perfectly efficient, right? Even if you assume 90% efficiency, 
uh, you know, so I don't know, remove like 25 watts, and now we're down to like 225, but you don't want to go right up against the limit. You know, okay, so then the whole system's probably down to like 210, 220 watts before you take that into account at most, and then you also have to account for things that are not on the APU. Yeah, I mean, that APU can't be using more than 200 watts. So if we assume 25 watts for the CPU, which is easily doable, maybe even a little less, um, what we're seeing is no matter how you put it, some GPU that uses probably about 150 watts at most will be in 40% bigger than a Navi 10 chip. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Are we going to get an efficiency boost with big Navi? Oh, and yeah, the next-gen Xbox will be stronger than a 5700 XT, just like so many have been saying it will be. But we still don't know the price, so I guess we got to wait for that, don't we? And we also need to know exactly what Sony's doing. I think it's going to be very semi-custom and interesting. I'm actually working on a video touching on that based on a tip I was sent. But you'll have to wait for that. And while you wait for that, maybe listen to the new Progen Silicon that came out today. Uh, but hope you enjoyed this. I wanted to throw it out there once I saw some new information that ties up a few recent Xbox leaks. If you did enjoy it, please share this video. Sharing these videos really does help so much. Like it, tell me what you think in the comments, and if you really like my content, consider supporting Moore's Law is Dead on Patreon. I just finished editing some Die Shrinks that are Patreon-exclusive podcast. I really think the next two episodes of Die Shrink are some of the best ones. All right, thank you. <laughs>